What is the structure of an atom? Okay, very, very basically, positively charged particles, which we call protons, exist in the nucleus of an atom, together with neutral particles called neutrons. Negatively charged particles, electrons, exist in orbitals surrounding the nucleus. If atoms have the same number of electrons as protons, the atom is said to be neutrally charged. So, atoms are electrically neutral, with the total negative charge of all of its electrons matching and cancelling the total positive charge of all the protons in the nucleus. When an atom gains or loses an electron, the balance of charges is upset, and the atom becomes an ion. An ion is simply an electrically charged atom. It is so-called because it will move in response to an electric field, and ion is the Greek word for going. The electrons surrounding the nucleus exist in a specific region of space at a specific distance from the nucleus, resembling dust clouds. It is actually more correct to consider the electrons as existing in a cloud around the nucleus, and some positions in the cloud are more probable than others. This has resulted in the simplistic analogy of layers that we all know. The laws of quantum mechanics dictate that up to two electrons surround the nucleus in the lowest layer, up to a further eight in the next surrounding layer, and then a further 18 in the next layer. A similar pattern with variations continues indefinitely as the number of electrons grows. This pattern means that in hydrogen, a single electron surrounds the nucleus. And in carbon, with its six electrons, two electrons form the lowest level cloud, and four more form surrounding clouds in the outer layer. These layers are known as shells, which actually represent energy levels. Shell number one, the shell closest to the nucleus, known simply as 1n, holds two electrons. Shell number two, 2n, holds eight. Um, shell number three can hold up to 18, and so on. As far as I'm aware, the most shells a known element can have is seven, the honor belonging to Agnassian ele element 118. However, the general formula is that the nth shell can in principle hold up to two times n squared electrons. So say if there was an element with 10 shells, then it could hold 2 times 10 squared electrons, which would be 200 electrons. So subshells are filled from the lowest energy shell first, which, as we said, is the shell closest to the nucleus. Electrons can be induced by an energy input to move to a higher shell than the lowest one available. However, they will quickly return to the more stable lower energy configuration, and when they move to the lower energy level, they release energy. In general, atoms that don't have a full major shell of electrons will seek to either retrieve electrons from other atoms or to give up some of their own. The electrons that can move between atoms and the outer electron shell are called the valence electrons. In general, if the outer major shell is full, the atom is inert. Examples of inert elements are helium, neon and argon, so inert elements have no valence electrons. Hydrogen, for example, has one electron in the first shell that exists, the shell with the lowest possible energy state. The first shell needs to have two electrons before it is full, so hydrogen will react easily with other atoms that will share an electron. Let's compare that to helium. Helium has two electrons. The electron shell is perfectly happy, and helium will not react with anything. When the first shell is full, the next shell with, the, with a higher energy level receives the additional electrons. The next element is lithium, which has three protons and three electrons. The first shell has two electrons and is stable. However, that third electron in the outer shell really wants to be in a couple, so it's third wheel in. Lithium is highly reactive and will give up the third electron at the drop of a hat. It'll give it up to anyone. Now, there are two primary ways that atoms can associate with one another to form molecules in the sense that they share their electrons or give them up. And this is either through ionic or covalent bonds, which we'll talk a bit more about later.